Hey, 42 here. This is the Mediterranean Sea. Segmented from the Atlantic Ocean by the Strait of Gibraltar, it has all the attributes you'd expect from a sea, namely a grand snaking coastline, over 28,000 miles all told. In fact, whether it's the Red Sea, the Black Sea, or the Yellow Sea, all seas have a coastline, right? A tangible rocky border that you can see, feel, and walk upon. Well, not all of them, because this is the Sargasso Sea. And unlike every other sea on Earth, it has no coastline. But how then is it a sea at all? Well, I'm glad you asked. Situated in the Atlantic Ocean, the Sargasso Sea is delineated not by land, but by the mighty ocean currents enclosing it. These currents comprising of the Gulf Stream, the North Atlantic Drift, the Canary Current, and the North Equatorial Current form an immense swirling vortex called the North Atlantic Gyre that perfectly isolates the Sargasso Sea from the rest of the ocean, meaning it doesn't have a coastline but rather an ocean line. And the delineation between water within the bounds of the Sargasso and outside it it's not just a technicality. There's something fundamentally different and unusual about this water. And as you're about to discover, this strange sea conceals a few hidden wonders that you won't find anywhere else on Earth. Are you tired of spending precious time preparing meals when you have a busy schedule? I know I am. Well, let me introduce you to Huel Black Edition, your super nutritional time saver. Huel Black Edition is an amazing 100% nutritionally complete meal that's plant-based, gluten-free and high in protein with low carbs. It's packed with 26 essential vitamins and minerals and it's ready in just 30 seconds. To make a Huel shake, I simply add 500 mils of water to my Huel shaker bottle, add two scoops of Huel powder and give it a good shake. My favorite is this Black Edition chocolate. I cannot believe this stuff is good for me because it's so rich and chocolatey and it tastes really, really good. I especially like to start my day on protein because protein is so essential to pretty much every function of the body and the protein packed breakfast just puts my body on the right track for the rest of the day. Each serving of Huel contains a massive 40 grams of protein and loads of fiber with less than 5% sugar. Oh, did I mention it's also really affordable? So just click the link in the description below to try Huel today. And if you use my special link, you'll be supporting the channel and you'll also get a free Huel shaker bottle so don't miss out. And thanks to Huel for sponsoring this video. Christopher Columbus was the first to mention this bit of sea during the age of exploration. He was captivated by the extensive floating seaweed mats he encountered, describing them as forests in the sea. And like most forests, Sargasso has an uncanny tranquility to it rarely found on the high seas. The surrounding currents act like protective walls, rendering the waters within exceptionally calm with minimal winds. This has given birth to legends of ships becoming ensnared within the sea, unable to break free from its motionless waters. One such unsettling tale is that of the French merchant ship Rosalie, which vanished without a trace in 1840. The ship was later discovered drifting aimlessly in the Sargasso Sea, with not a single person on board. She'd been completely abandoned. Yet the sails were set, the cargo was untouched, and the crew's personal belongings were still on board. But there was no sign of a struggle or any indication of what happened to the crew. And to this day, we still don't have an answer. Weirdly, nobody actually knows how big the Sargasso Sea is. After all, its borders are constantly changing with the ocean currents, but it's roughly 1800 by 600 nautical miles. However, if you're traveling nearby, you'll know you've hit the Sargasso when the color of the water below becomes a deep azure blue. The almost translucent Sargasso offers visibility of up to 60 meters deep. So this surprisingly serene sea devoid of a coastline is an odd place indeed. But there's something even more bizarre bobbing upon its surface. It's called Sargassum seaweed, and it has allured explorers, scientists, and sailors alike throughout history. Sargassum, a brown microalgae, is speckled with tiny gas-filled sacs known as pneumatocysts. These air-filled pockets allow the seaweed to float gracefully atop the ocean's surface, forming these extensive tangled rafts that meander with the currents. 
And this rather clever seaweed functions as a carbon sink. It absorbs and stores atmospheric carbon dioxide, thus mitigating the impacts of global warming. Boasting a one-of-a-kind morphology, the two main species, Sargassum natans and Sargassum fluitans, coalesce to form substantial seaweed structures that stretch for hundreds of miles. Some are even detectable from space. They're so large that throughout history they've acted as navigational landmarks for seafarers. The seaweed's consistent presence allowed sailors to verify their location and prevent confusion amidst the enormous, otherwise featureless ocean. But as Sargassum surges in size, it has sparked speculation that a sprawling mass of it spanning several hundred miles might wash up on Florida's beaches upon which it would slowly decompose, discharging hydrogen sulfide, exuding the scent of rotten eggs. Naturally, this would negatively impact tourism. Because nothing says beach holiday like a mountain of rotting goo next to your cabana that smells like putrid shite. <laughs> Hence, boats now frequently battle these bothersome behemoths, breaking them up before they besiege Florida's Margarita Merry masses. Sargassum has always mystified mariners. Sailors spun intricate yarns of fantastical creatures lurking within its tangled recesses, or of ships hopelessly trapped by its unyielding grasp. Like mermaids, it's said that Sargassum can drag men and boats to their peril, and no doubt it has contributed to the Bermuda Triangle mysteries, an area that the Sargasso Sea overlaps. It's believed the Phoenicians, a seafaring civilization that originated in the Eastern Mediterranean around 1550 BC, may have actually discovered the Sargasso Sea long before that Columbus chap. The Phoenicians were known for their advanced navigational skills and maritime prowess, and recent discoveries of Phoenician artifacts such as pottery shards and shipwrecks in the Sargasso suggest that these ancient mariners may have ventured here thousands of miles away from their homeland. The Phoenicians were likely drawn to the Sargasso due to the abundant resources it offered, including fish and the valuable Sargassum seaweed, which could be used for various purposes such as medicine, dye, and even a source of precious metals like gold. But just think what this means for a second. If an ancient Phoenician civilization visited this remote, watery world on the other side of the Atlantic, might they have gotten that bit farther and landed in the Americas two and a half thousand years before legendary Viking explorer Leif Erikson? Perhaps, and to add weight to this crazy theory, in 1872, a stone inscribed with Phoenician writing was unearthed in Brazil. There's still debate about its authenticity, but it describes a Phoenician ship separated from its fleet in a storm. Could that forlorn vessel have surfed the Sargasso Sea, eventually sauntering its way to South America? We don't know, but it's a tantalizing thought. For centuries, those navigating the Sargasso have told of peculiar noises echoing through the water. Some have ascribed this to agonized wails of lost souls ensnared within the seaweed whilst others blame various sea beasties. Contemporary research, however, has unveiled that what they were hearing are snapping shrimp, which use their claws like spring-loaded pistols to generate tiny sonic booms underwater to disorientate and immobilize their prey. I actually did a whole video about them if you'd like to know more. The floating seaweed islands of the Sargasso serve as a vital oasis for many highly specialized creatures. Remarkably, some of these are endemic to the Sargasso, meaning they are found nowhere else on Earth. Just think how crazy that is. There are literally creatures that exist only in this sea. That's entirely within an ocean. That's only borders are ocean currents. Weird. In fact, the Sargasso Sea is often called the floating rainforest because of the remarkable range of biodiversity in this otherwise desolate region of the ocean. Over 100 fish species, 145 invertebrates, and even 10 sharks call these supposedly silent waters their home. This wealth of life has led some to propose that the Sargasso Sea should be recognized as one of Earth's natural wonders.
Although not endemic, one enchanting denizen is the baby sea turtle. Upon hatching on Caribbean shores, these tiny heroes embark on an epic quest, seeking shelter amidst the Sargassum's protective embrace. The seaweed delivers both nourishment and camouflage, allowing these defenseless hatchlings to dodge the hordes of predators that seek to gobble them up. Another resident avoiding predators here is the Atlantic White Marlin. Pregnant females release their eggs within the tangled seaweed mats, providing a secure haven for their offspring to mature. This novel spawning strategy is exclusively used by this fish. But there is a creature so well adapted to these waters, it's actually named after it. Histrio Histrio, better known as the Sargassum fish. Its body is adorned with weed-like protrusions and it has mottled skin expertly mimicking the seaweed's appearance, which allows it to camouflage within. The anti-social sargassum employs a stealthy hunting tactic, lying in wait for unsuspecting prey to wander too close to the seaweed. Then, with lightning-fast reflexes and lethal accuracy, it strikes, swallowing its target whole. Okay, we get it, you'd like to be left alone. Now, if you've ever watched my video on how eels reproduce, you may recall a sargasso sea, as their potential breeding ground. Or should that be breeding sea? Anyway, we think these mysterious creatures journey thousands of miles from their European freshwater homes to the Sargasso Sea, where they spawn and lay their eggs. The resulting juvenile eels, known as leptocephali, drift back to Europe on ocean currents, eventually morphing into more recognisable adult eels. At least we think that's what happens. As crazy as it sounds, we actually don't know how eels reproduce, and they're probably the most confusing and least understood mystery of the Sargasso Sea. But I won't get into all that here, just go watch my video on them. It's fascinating stuff, honestly. The Sargasso Sea really is its own little planet in the middle of the ocean. Symbiosis, where species partake in mutually advantageous interactions, is a recurring theme here. Tiny crustaceans munch on algae and detritus, which concurrently supplies essential nutrients for the seaweed to flourish. And then when that seaweed breaks down, it releases vital nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus back into the water. These nutrients fuel microscopic organisms like phytoplankton, which forms the foundation of the marine food chain. And so on and so on. Since the Sargasso Sea occupies international waters, no single nation can lay claim to it and so its preservation and future rely on global cooperation. Hence, in 2014, the Hamilton Declaration for the Conservation of the Sargasso Sea was signed, in which numerous governments and organisations pledged their commitment to generally keep an eye on the Sargasso and not mess about with it too much. It's basically a worldwide pinky promise to not fuck it up, which I guess is better than nothing. The Sargasso Sea is a special part of Earth's natural legacy. Its astounding biodiversity, ecological importance and cultural worth make it an invaluable asset for humanity's future. But the biggest threat to the Sargasso is, predictably, all of humanity's shite. You've heard of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, I presume? Well, let me introduce you to its lesser known relative, the North Atlantic Garbage Patch. This swirling vortex of plastic packaging and assorted debris has set up shop in a particular corner of the North Atlantic Ocean. Unfortunately, all of this assorted flotsam flows right through the Sargasso Sea, worming its way through the calm waters where it inevitably becomes entangled with the sprawling Sargassum seaweed mats. This spells disaster for the Sargasso's special critters and its fragile ecological equilibrium. Microplastic munching by tiny marine organisms can kick off a chain reaction of bioaccumulation of plastic within the food chain, which will ultimately affect larger predators. Taking on the Herculean task of eradicating the North Atlantic garbage patch calls for a cocktail of cleanup crusades, such as the ocean cleanup and the five gyres, which are hard at work extracting plastic waste from the oceans. And in the future, innovative technology might help matters. But ultimately, this plastic book stops with us. Thanks for watching.